This month, Eye on the Arts features Tall Tree Arboretum and Gardens and their efforts to promote the timeless pairing of nature and art. Classically trained Harpeth Rising brings their unique brand of chamber folk to the open air pavilion that sits behind picturesque Heron Pond. Enjoy the sounds as the canopy of dappled sunlight gives way to the night sky for Tall Tree's Concert Under the Stars series. Miller Beach Arts and Creative District continues to draw visitors with its third annual sand sculpting competition at Lake Street Beach. Professionals and amateurs alike tap into their imaginations to bring familiar forms to the sands of Lake Michigan. Rosalind Mitchell shares how the Miller Beach Arts and Creative District is striving to make itself a destination for beach bums, diners, and art lovers. As kids head back to the classroom, we take a look inside a Marquette Catholic High School art class. Laura Lizer shares why arts classes are important and how she focuses her lessons to get the average student to understand and express their creativity. Studio 6 at Valparaiso employs a values-based curriculum to teach children how to compose and record their own songs using the latest in modern technology. Lakeshore Public Television and South Shore Arts are taking Eye on the Arts out of the studio and into the community. The show will take an intimate look at local artists and their creations, as well as galleries, theater groups, musicians, and performers, highlighting anything and everything that the diverse local art scene has to offer. Lakeshore Public Television and South Shore Arts feel the art community is a fascinating representation of Northwest Indiana, and we'd like to share that experience with you. Eye on the Arts is made possible in part by South Shore Arts, the Indiana Arts Commission, and the National Endowment for the Arts, a federal agency. I took the last Tall Tree Arboretum and Gardens is capitalizing on the classic pairing of art and nature to draw a new audience to the unique collection of outdoor spaces they steward. Their Under the Stars concert series recently featured Hearthpet Rising, performing in an open-air pavilion. They entertained with their self-described chamber folk music as the canopy of dappled sunlight gave way to the night sky. Tall Tree Arboretum and Gardens is a non-profit environmental organization. We have 330 acres of wetlands, woodlands, formal gardens, oak savanna, and prairie, including the third most diverse collection of oak trees in the nation. He took my hand, smiled, and shook his head. We have educational programs. We have a host of classes, uh, such as uh, gardening classes, and uh, we have hikes. Um, there really is something for everybody here at Tall Tree uh, of any age, of any interest. It's going to be divine when you see the we have had a summer concert series this year called the Under the Stars Concert Series. We've had comedy performances, variety shows. Uh, we had a Marilyn Monroe person impersonator. We have a Frank Sinatra impersonator coming up. So a host of different types of entertainment every Thursday night uh, right here on our property. We're hearing from so many people how beautiful it is that they've not been here, that they're enjoying uh, the melding of nature and art, which is really a historic uh, coupling. It just makes sense for this to be the backdrop for the type of performances that we've been having. Today we have Harpeth Rising. They're an incredible trio of classically trained uh, performers. They perform everything from folk music to their own spin on uh, some classic rock, including the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. They are just phenomenal, like nothing you've ever heard before. We use a term called chamber folk. The three of us all have classical training, and it's a, a very big part of our musical background, and a lot of the music that inspires us is classical chamber music, but obviously what we're doing is in some ways more along the veins of a folk band or a, a string band. There's even bluegrass influence and Appalachian, and so we sort of, from all of those things, we felt that folk music was maybe the most prominent in what we do. And uh, especially in terms of sort of the lyrical aspect and the harmonies. So um, we just combined two words. <laughs> Junon and I uh, know each other from Bloomington, Indiana, not too far down the road. And we both studied at the Jacob School of Music at Indiana University. And uh, that's where I met her and uh, joined the band. And more recently, we've met Michelle, I would say about five months ago. I am May. Clay, baked by the sun, 
And I can move on a little But I can't be undone We don't even have a typical venue in the sense that on a five concert stretch we could play a theater, an outdoor festival, uh, a coffee house, someone, yeah, mm -hmm. someone's house, and an alpaca farm. So, All of which have happened. Yeah. Those have happened, yeah. You feel so lucky you're playing and there's this gorgeous sunset, there's, there's a, you know, a lake, a body of water and trees and flowers and I will say it's very calming on that aspect. Oh, something has shifted. I can't feel the pavilion where we perform our Under the Stars series uh, serves a host of purposes here. Uh, it does serve as home for our Under the Stars concerts on Thursday nights. It's also a popular site for weddings, corporate events, meetings. Uh, it's just a beautiful open air structure right on our Heron Pond uh, with a formal garden surrounding it. We like to be outside as much as we can while, while we can in the summer. So. Also, touring, of course, requires spending a good amount of time on the road, and so you're in a vehicle. So, yeah, there's definitely the element of, of getting, you know, getting to spend a, a few more hours outside that is really wonderful. A tall tree is growing in many ways. In the past, we had maybe six signature events throughout the year. This year, we have more than 50 events on the calendar. And what we're finding is, by increasing the number of events that we have, we're introducing people to Tall Tree who've not been here before, bringing them in for some of our events and concerts. And what's happening is they're leaving as members. Our membership is actually almost triple what it was this time last year. And we have been seeing a direct correlation to some of the events that we've been having. Come out and see Tall Tree. It's an amazing place. And if you haven't been here in a while, you need to come back, because Tall Tree has changed a lot in the last several years. It's, it's worth a visit. I was made from steel Or that's how it felt Miller Beach Arts and Creative District draws attention to their quiet beach town with its third annual sand sculpting competition. The event is held at Lake Street Beach and it welcomes sculptors and observers with food and beverage vendors, live music, games for the kids, and a relaxing day on the shores of Lake Michigan. I was a lifeguard in high school and I've always loved the beach. And so being an architect and being in art, I said, let's do a sand sculpting competition. And we did it and we got very positive feedback. And each year we've gotten more and more uh, feedback from people that they enjoy it. And we're just looking to get more exposure and to take it to another level. We invite families, individuals, teenagers, and children to come out and do sand sculptures. We have vendors here, we have games for the children, so it's just a family fun-filled event. I'm with my mom and my dad. We did this two years ago, and we won first place. Building a plane, it's supposed to be being built and put in the aquatorium this year, so we're building that. How long will it take you to build your plane? Um, I'm not sure, a couple hours. It's... Yeah, you seem to be working fast. Yeah. <laughs> I saw lots of buckets of water being oh, yeah. uh, brought in. Yeah. Why is that? Well, you got to make sure the sand is uh, tight so it's not going to fall apart with the like sugary sand so it's easy to pack. You got to make sure that it can build up and not crumble or anything. Well, what's your favorite part about doing it? Being with my family and I don't know it's like teamwork so it's our creativity comes together so I just like being with everybody. In the old days, we called it no plans, no mistakes, because at any minute something could collapse or you have a slide. And so you always have to have a plan B in your back pocket. The biggest problem is keeping the sand wet because uh, it's so dry and um, the water doesn't penetrate very fast. So I have to wet it, draw out the lettering, then re-wet it. Gravity and the, and the evaporation, it just goes fast. Sand sculptures need a lot of water. I use cement finishing tools like, like a, a, a mason would use, and I also use pallet knives 
for finer details like an artist would use in a painting, a canvas or something. And then a straw is, is very important to have. And then there's other things like levels, spray bottles are really nice, suntan lotion, and band-aids, because it's always cutting yourself on something, it seems like, you know. <laughs> Waterproof band-aids. It's a little dicey when you get into sculptures that are, you know, way over your head. When you're talking 50 or 100 tons, and it takes days or weeks to build, especially outside, it, it's, a, it's a different can of worms. There was a group of people who made the correlation between economic development and art and culture. And so that's how the district got started. And this is just another one of those events that features art and culture and gets us exposure. I'd love to see Lake Street become a beach town. We have lots of businesses, lots of venues for people to come to eat, to drink, to have fun, and ultimately come and enjoy the beach. I'd just like to thank all of our sponsors, all of our volunteers. This is a, definitely a team effort, the Miller Beach Arts and Creative District, and all of our entrants. And to the rest of Northwest Indiana, please come on out to Lake Street. Next year, we're gonna have a sand sculpting competition and you're more than welcome to be a part of it. It's a great thing to do with family and friends and it's to get to know people around your community. And I love doing it every year because I get to see new, new people and new things. Um, well, for me, getting my students to express their creativity means that every student has a successful outcome, to, you know, and it doesn't depend, it's not dependent on their skill level. Um, meaning that they're expressing themselves, that they feel like they, they can do it, you know, because a lot of students have some fear around their creativity or putting stuff on paper. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of that's creating a safe environment for them. I remember one time I had a student, he would come in and it was the beginning of the semester and he was just acting out. I finally, it came out maybe about two weeks after the beginning of the semester that he had been shamed by one of his art teachers that told him he couldn't draw. So what I worked with him to see that he had his own style and that, you know, when he was putting things together on the page it looked interesting. And so, you know, and then it you was know, like once he had that felt safe, he, you know, I wasn't having problems with him anymore. Because I think what these, most of these students need to learn is how to make things, what does it feel like to, to work with materials. I mean, they're getting less and less of that in their lives these days. So it's really important for them, I think, to have, um, you know, hands-on experience. It's like they're so, you know, we're so getting, used to being on our devices all the time that I think there's even more need to just concretely work with stuff. So I think doing some stuff in real life is really important. Art to me is any piece of work that you can create with your hands, like draw, whether it's drawing or sculpting or any of that. Just whenever, whether it is in your, from your own perspective, if you like it or not, then I think that is art because others will critique you in the end. But what matters most is that if you like it, then I think that you're going to like your artwork and what you do. I think art is more about the idea. It gives us an opportunity to see things in a different way and to, um, you know, express things in a new way. So. I mean, I really don't care if they learn how to render, you know, absolutely draw, you know, like a jar of pickles to look really realistic. I think if they learn to look at things and be more observant, because artists see things differently. So, so it's, you know, it's like taking simple things and expanding what they express and mean. So I think with art, um, you know, it isn't always the first answer. Sometimes it, when things don't work, that's more of an opportunity to learn about things than when they, um, you know, when they come out, when it's easy for you. I think art is a very important part of your curriculum because you kind of just need something to make you think outside of the box, not like writing or something like that because it's a huge grade and they critique everything in your writing, but for your art it's just how, how far you thought out of the box and they don't look at your flaws because your flaws 
look like something you purposely did to make the piece look better? I, you know what, there is no right and wrong answer. It's more about, you know, how did you, you know, you know, did you work at it? Did you, you know, express yourself? Did you, you know, follow the assignment? And that's really, I think the only wrong answer is just not trying. You know, art is um, like a fundamental part of human existence and that each cult culture has its own way of expressing it. I think I'm more encouraged to express myself by Miss I. She's always like, oh, maybe you can do this or you should try this, this will make it look better. And then you start thinking, it makes you brainstorm like, oh yeah, that would sound cool. And then you think of another thing and you wanna add something else to it and it just makes your project even more elaborate. I think that, you know, my love of art and art making, you know, translates to them. You know, I think, you know, it's fun in here, you know, and I think that's that makes a big difference. So if I enjoy what I'm doing, it, you know, they can enjoy what they're doing. I do believe art is important because kids can somehow, in a way, express, like, learn who they are in a different way in art. Like, because everyone has different styles and techniques of doing their own ways, and you can really do it on your own here. You know, I mean, I do have some very talented students. Um, and I have some students that are, you know, trying the best they can, and most of them are do, do a pretty good job. So, I mean, I'm proud of them. Studio 6, offered by the Boys and Girls Clubs of Porter County, believes in the power of music and the creative process. The program empowers children with the opportunity to create, arrange, and record their own compositions. Using a values-based curriculum, inspired instructor Matt Seward believes creating music can offer life lessons if we take the time to listen. It's a six-week program, and the ultimate goal is for the students to come away with uh, their own original composition write their own song, uh, but through the course of that process, we kind of go through this values-based curriculum where they learn the, not only the principles of recording software and how to write and arrange music, but also how to do it in a way that we sort of understand the bigger picture of some of these lessons that we learn. Through that, we kind of bring those ideas together and learn about music and, and life. When I came in, I just knew I was going to like it. I thought my song was going to be horrible, but it turned out pretty good. The opportunity he has to speak with me about it, he was really excited about it. But to actually hear and see what it actually is, and, and actually, I can actually tell what he was excited about, very cool. It's amazing just to be able to express things with what I love, music. As soon as I get in here, I sit down, open up the program, and then sometimes if it's before class, we'll share our projects with each other. Working with Matt and uh, all the other kids, listening to their ideas. I think it's cool the way they put their music together and the way I put mine together. I think it's just something new. Because it's something that I've never heard before. I just want to see how different interests can come together and make, and make a song. It seems pretty cool. Make your own music kind of freedom and you can kind of express yourself through music. It's been cool to see seven, eight kids hear the same principles and then all go tap into that in different ways. I would just simply say I am incredibly impressed with the technology that was used, the young people's involvement, their ability to set themselves apart. They work collectively, but they set themselves apart in their creativity. Each and every one of them sounded completely different. I can make what I want. I can change things up as easily as I want. At first, it's one thing, then it's another, then it completely changes. 
first we were looking at the loops, and then we did this. We looked at the drum ones, and then I saw the piano ones, and I liked how a few of them went together. Then I started putting in different things, like putting in different kinds of instruments and stuff, and it's been turning out good. On the keyboard, you can make your own drum loops, so that's what I've just been doing. I think I just find like the certain sound that I'm looking for. It may take a few seconds, it may take a few hours, but when I got it, then I'll just let it flow. So I think for me, what's exciting is to give them the chance to explore uh, you know, some of the ways that they've been gifted. It's cool to see that take shape. Yeah, it's a process, but it's, it's cool to see them make progress in those areas uh, and to start to learn you know, how all the different pieces of the puzzle work together. I have definitely seen some light bulbs go off. Tendencies that maybe weren't there a couple weeks ago are being developed now. It allows these students to understand that some of those maybe missteps or, or challenges along the way is all a part of the process. Music has been around me my whole life and I think this is pretty cool. I mean, it's a new experience from then to now. So I think it's something that I'm gonna keep doing. I feel blessed to have this. We can kind of come together and, and speak into each other's projects, but that only happens in a safe environment where you trust the people that are that are there, and in the same way, I think that's true uh, in life too. And it only works if you're if you're there's a posture of, of openness and trust. So I think it's huge to have that here. I think it's a cool experience. I see like other people on TV that know how to do it, and they're so like they're an expert at it. And then when I came into this class and figured out what we were really doing, I was like, maybe that could be me one day. You know, there's a lot of pressure on kids as they grow up to, you know, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do when you graduate high school, what are you going to do when you graduate college? And just to help them understand that, you know, there's a value in being present here in the moment, right, as we go through this program, but that some of those decisions aren't going to be the greatest. And you learn from them, we talk about them, and, uh, you know, you kind of use that as a stepping stone to build. And I think, yeah, it's been um, cool to just celebrate the process as a whole and not necessarily measuring success musically just by the end result. Visit the Boys and Girls Clubs of Porter County online for more information on Studio 6 and other programs. Eye on the Arts is made possible in part by South Shore Arts, the Indiana Arts Commission, and the National Endowment for the Arts, a federal agency. Thank you for joining us. Find Lakeshore Public Media on YouTube for this episode's segments, as well as features from past shows. And join us next month for another edition of Eye on the Arts.
Lakeshore Public Television and South Shore Arts are taking Eye on the Arts out of the studio and into the community. The show will take an intimate look at local artists and their creations, as well as galleries, theater groups, musicians, and performers, highlighting anything and everything that the diverse local arts scene has to offer. Lakeshore Public Television and South Shore Arts feel the art community is a fascinating representation of Northwest Indiana, and we'd like to share that experience with you.